Hello and welcome back to FT.com. Will she or won't she? Is she a hawk or a dove? Well, certainly in this photo, she looks more like a hawk. We've spent the last two days listening to Janet Yellen of the Fed testifying before Congress, and frankly, there's only one question anybody is interested in. Well, exactly when is the Fed going to start raising closer. interest rates? The committee expects inflation to decline further in the near term before rising gradually toward 2% over the medium term as the labor market improves further. And Is it going to be as early as this June? With me now to discuss this is Alphaville's Matt Klein. Now, one big question that arises, I think both of us are in agreement that the Fed basically wants to raise rates in June, even if that's not a completely done deal. So perhaps that raises the issue that uh, many people think that the risks of uh, hiking too soon are greater than the risks of hiking too late. I mean, I, I guess you could say Paul Krugman has been talking about this. You've got the example of 1937, where the Fed raised rates too soon, or in Sweden, where the Riksbank was one of the first central banks to raise rates, and it's now actually gone back down to negative following the crisis. Do you think that's what's animating uh, people out in the markets? That it's certainly a possibility. I mean, so uh, every couple of months, the Fed conducts a survey of primary dealers, which mm. are the banks that that transacted them uh, trading treasury bonds. And very recently, it was basically in the fall, they started asking a new question, which was, uh, what do you assign the probability that the Fed will have to bring rates back down to zero within two years after the first rate hike? Mm. And the answer is about 25% say that they think that the Fed will have to basically undo any tightening, any marginal tightening that it's done. That's a uh, big number. Right, that's, that's pretty large. Uh, so it's understandable that um, you know, if people believe that, that that's included in the market pricing, the Fed clearly doesn't believe that that's, you know, that large of a risk. Um, you know, there's also the question of the euro dollar futures are, you know, expected values of a whole bunch of different possibilities. The dots are just showing people sort of mid-range expectations mm -hmm. for what the Fed's going to do. So there could be, if people's expectations of the downside risks uh, are relatively larger, even if they think sort of the, the baseline outcome is the same as what the Fed's predicting, the market pricing might reasonably diverge just because they're worried about these sort of extreme outcomes. And there's another piece of uh, evidence that fits with this. Mm -hmm. the, um, to go along with Yellen's testimony, the Fed produces this monetary policy report. It's a very detailed uh, booklet containing yeah. all this information. One, they had a box about measuring long-term inflation expectations. So one of the things they were, they were discussing that uh, I found particularly interesting is looking at 10-year uh, inflation options, which basically reflect the price if you want to pay insurance um, or you want to purchase insurance, rather, uh, that inflation over a 10-year period is going to either be below or above a certain rate. Right. And what they found recently is that the price of protecting against extremely low inflation outcomes has gone up a lot, where the price of protecting against extremely high inflation outcomes has gone down So people a lot. are really buying the secular stagnation, Japanification type story. Something like that. Or, I mean, there's a lot of narratives you could assign. I mean, one could be that there were a lot of people who were just irrationally afraid of hyperinflation and they've mm. essentially disappeared. Um, you could uh, certainly have also people saying, well, you've had essentially zero defl inflation or even uh, deflation in much of Europe, um, and, and uh, a lot of other pl commodity prices are collapsing. Maybe it's something to be on the margin slightly more afraid of. And we're talking about purchasing insurance, not necessarily what your sort of mid-range estimate's going to be. Maybe it's rational to be paying a little extra um, to insure against those extreme outcomes. Okay. One final question. Very practical question for those in the markets. I think we're in agreement that the chances of a hike in June are probably somewhat above 50-50, but it's not a done deal. What needs to happen between now and June for the Fed not to hike, do you think? So tying back to, I think, what we were discussing earlier is that the labor market is really something that the mm. Fed is looking at wages, um, that this is really arguably the reason that they would want to hike in the first place is looking at the labor market and wages. Inflation isn't really telling them to do one thing or the other. <coughs> if you suddenly see a deceleration in job growth if you suddenly see a fallback in wage growth, uh, which would be very different. You know, that would be something uh, to cause some It would be completely lot. against the current apparent right, trend. Right, it has to, to be a significant change. Right? Or, or um, you know, kind of a financial crisis occurring somewhere yeah. in the rest of the world. There's a lot of uh, emerging market borrowers who've taken out debt in dollars. The dollars appreciated significantly against many major currencies. Um, it's certainly possible you could have some kind of blow up in the, in the course of rate hikes. That might cause them to delay after an initial rate hike. It's not clear what the probabilities of any of things, these things are, but I mean, uh, I believe it was William Dudley <coughs> a year or so ago gave, I mean, this was in the context of, of tapering, but I think it's probably still relevant, which is that 
you know, as long as GDP growth is between zero and five percent, more or less, they're just going to be staying on the path that they've selected. And you'd have to have a, but a that pretty path serious does involve a gradual right, move, which, which would call it, right, which would involve some kind of gradual increase in, in short-term interest rates eventually. So uh, you'd have to have something pretty significant, I think, to derail them. Okay, Matt. Thank you very much indeed. I completely agree with Matt on this. I think the takeaways are the odds are that we do get a rate hike in June, uh, that it will take quite a major crisis or a surprise in the unemployment numbers for that not to happen. Given that the market is plainly not yet pricing that in as fully as it should, I guess that means we should be a tad nervous about equities. We should also be somewhat bullish about the dollar.